everybody and welcome back to the Triforce podcast with me, Perry and Flax and Sips on the road. That's right. I'm in Bristol today for the for the Triforce podcast. I've left <laughs> I've left my dad dungeon behind. I've left Terry by himself and I'm here. I don't know if this one counts as on the road. Just saying. I am on the road. He's on the road. Uh, well. Flax was on the road yesterday. He's like fresh off the road. I suppose. He's still that's dusty. True. That's He's how still off dusty the road. from the road. Yeah. That's how off the road proximate I am. I was literally. How dusty are the roads these days? Well, friend, let me tell you something. You head off <laughs> into the great wilds of the area between Bristol and London. I don't know what you call it, but it's pretty it's dusty. It's Nantucket. I'm sure it's Nantucket. Nantucket. <laughs> Go via Nantucket on the way back to, to Twickenham. <laughs> Twickenham. It's just, Twickenham. It's just one straight road, basically. Uh, did you yeah, have to go through Gloucestershire on the way go there, to Gl- too? Gl- Gloucestershire on the way to Nantucket. And nice. Take you uh, re- to the south of Reading. And then by a Swindone. Uh, Plymouth? Was Plymouth featured? Plymouth, t'other direction, friend. You hit Plymouth, oh. you've gone too darn far. So, did, have you guys ever done a road trip? Have you ever got. Have you no, guys ever never, like, Lewis, set out into the great never, I've never done beyond. a road trip before. Well, you mean. So, when we define road trip, you're not saying driving a long way. You're talking about hitting the road and just never looking back. That kind of thing. I mean, feeling the wind in your hair yeah. and just, you know, the sun on your face. Get get put, take the, get the sun visor down and put your sunglasses on and just drive. I do it all the time, but 45 square miles always leads you back home. Um, <laughs> He's right. <laughs> I feel like there's a, a country song in that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 45 miles around take, Jersey Island. <laughs> take a left every town and you'll find your way back home again. It's a square. It's a square. We're driving in a square. <laughs> we haven't got that many roads and I still haven't seen them all. <laughs> you always end up back. It's crazy. Like You, you try your hardest to, to not go back. But I think, you, you know back. what? That's a lot of people's experience, you know? They end up back home again. Yeah. You know? Well, home is, uh, home is where the heart is, Lewis. So if you take your heart with you on the road you're Bingo. always home you're always home and you can take yeah. the weather yeah. with you as well beautiful yeah yeah everywhere you go yep you always take the weather with you that's right too yeah and every rose every rose has its thorn as well lewis yeah every road has its thorn beautiful. yeah every road has its thorn and rose I, uh, as well. i almost did a road trip after i think it was ti6 i was going to drive from seattle to florida oh like, yeah i had 10 days i planned you mentioned it this before yeah i have off. No, you're right. No, no, it's all right. No, 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 carry on, though. But that was the closest I can. If you want to know more, go look through all the previous episodes of Triforce <laughs> until I mention it. <laughs> I was hoping we could just rehash some old yeah, stories and start, start looping. It's filler. Hey, listen, listen, somebody in somebody on Reddit pointed out that at one point we started talking about escape rooms, but then I think Lewis cut us short, as Lewis does. Yeah. We were about to start talking about them, and Lewis is like, all right, we got to go. But... We're only three minutes in, boys. We got plenty of time to talk about escape rooms. Anybody got any anything they want to say about escape rooms? I've been to one. The yeah, end. same. Went to one. It was okay. We escaped. Okay, Lewis. Lewis. No. All right. <laughs> so um, that's it for escape rooms. <laughs> Moving on Sorry, to the next. I, didn't think you, I was listening to you. Did you ask me? Sorry. Oh well, yeah. We, said, we uh, can cut the gap. No, no, uh, it's fine. No, no don't leave cut it. the gap. I want people to know what gap. we're up against every single time we record Triforce. Yeah. I, I thought I was listening to you. It was like a bunch. Of, look, sometimes you go a bit of lag on Discord. It has to be trimmed up. It's a lag. Yeah. You know, it was lag. That's why I lose shooters as well. Yeah. Sorry, I was. I was just. I thought because you two sometimes talk over each other. It doesn't sound like it's you, but I hear you both at the same time, and then I just assume you think that, I'm staying out of this. That's what you think. Yeah. Like when, when didn't parents hear you. argue. That's what I'm getting old. All right. This is your cue to... now, Lewis. Loud and clear. Go for Have it. you ever been to an escape room before? And if so, what was your experience like? I've done a bunch of escape rooms right. um yeah i did one in new zealand i did one like a couple in america did a did a one in bristol it's they're good they're good fun they're nice they're like i know exactly that's that's my that's that's usually uh, talking about you going to an escape room is a little bit like talking about your dreams like you know yeah, yeah. no one's interested it's, it's true just, why why, why did this guy point this out? I mean, why point out? I don't out? know. It was one of those things. Just, you know, I guess he was like really interested to hear our hot we, take we, on We didn't have rooms. anything interesting to say about this game. Well, no, that's, that's it. Like maybe we did. Maybe he thought we might have something no, interesting to say. No, sadly, friend, we did not. We, we fine. did not and we do, do not. Mean, they're a nice afternoon. Yeah. I thought you would do them at night though, really, wouldn't you? Nighttime? It's like a it's like a social I think outing. I'd rather do an escape room than a lot of other like things. What would you, you rather know? do? What would you rather not do, I mean? 
Well, give me a thing you'd like, rather do as an escape room than. I would, I, for instance, I wouldn't want to go to like a um, a techno club. Right. I wouldn't want to go to a rave either. Actually, um, just I'm at the yeah. point in my life now where I could just never go to a rave again, and I'd be fine with that. Hmm. Well, look, last night what happened was. Me and Sips were together here in Bristol because we just finished filming this thing. Yeah. yeah. And you were here as well. I was. But actually, you went you went home. Yeah. And so I was like, me and Sips were hanging out in the office. I was like, what should I do? He's like, I don't care. And I was like, well, shall, shall. I mean, because in my head, I was like, I could just go home now, leave Sips to his own devices <laughs> and then, like, you know, cook some dinner. <laughs> but I was like, I kind of want to hang out and talk and stuff and be sociable. So I was like, what can we do? And I went through the options in my head. I was like, do you want to go to some movies? He was like, not really. I was like, do you want to go do bowling? He was like, not really. I was like, it's only two of us. So that would be a bit of a lame, like, date in an escape yeah, room. Don't yeah. really want to do that. So I was like, do you want to play a board game? He was like, sure. So we played some board games. And then we both went off and, and did our stuff. And I think you watched like yeah, we could watch. I watched that vampire movie. What, oh, you watched what, um, what, what we do in the shadows. I watched that. Oh, my wife loves that movie. Yeah. Oh, it's funny as fuck. Holy shit, I liked it a lot. And I, I just went home and and watched a movie as well. I watched um some of the the uh, surviving Nev- Neverland or whatever. The, oh, the man. Michael Jackson. Michael thing. Jackson thing. I heard yeah. all Oof. about it when I was Oof. driving back. It was meant to be a really smooth drive, but there was a big snare up around Bracknell, so I uh, got to. Tied up in a little bit of uh, traffic there, took a left Fuck down the A30, you know. came around the back way um, through Sanembury and uh, spam back on the M25, one junction down to the M3, and then Bosch it left into Twick and I'm easy peasy. But it did add an hour <laughs> onto the journey, unfortunately. But uh, they were talking, Eddie Mayer was talking uh, on LBC about um, finding Netherland, Neverland, and people were saying, should we still listen to his music? Oh, should we not? So this is about Michael Jackson, for anyone not, not in the know. Michael Jackson and his, his uh, history of child abuse. And the issue is that does the fact that you've now found out all this awful testimony, which is, let's be frank, is probably true about Michael Jackson, um, do you still listen to Thriller and music like that? And there were some people saying it's changed their appreciation of his stuff and they can't listen anymore. And another guy called up and said, look, a lot of people out there that are famous artists or writers or st- directors or actors or whatever have done shitty, terrible things. Can we separate the art from the artist? And for example, Gauguin, widely regarded as a master, was fucking little girls out when he was painting those painters. That's why he painted those pictures of little girls. You still see Gauguin in all the fucking galleries. There's not tape over his paintings. Why are we accepting of that? Is it just an issue of time? Is it that enough time has passed? Or are we able to say, look, yes, he was a piece of shit, but the artwork is separate from the person. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I think, we should all, um, I think we should still be showing Jim will fix it back on TV, honestly. <laughs> get you know, get him was... on. So you know what? Get Start back that on. petition, Lewis. Let's see how that goes. Get I miss, Jim, I miss get it. Get Jim back on British telly. I mean, now we've got Brexit. We don't have to worry about Jim will fix it. Get him back on. It, <laughs> it, it, is, it is shitty like that it happens, and it, it should never happen. But for fuck's sake, it happens all the goddamn time, it feels like. And why are you fucking leaving your kids near these people at any point? Like, like, why are you, why would you, why would you let your kid go to fucking Michael Jackson's mansion unsupervised Because he gave, he gave them a load of money. Well, well, no, it's not quite that. You need to watch the documentary. It's It was very cleverly, very insidiously done. Like, very, but, but still, like, slow. If, if Michael and, Jackson phoned me up and is like, hey, does your son want to come hang out? I'd be like, no, Michael. Yes, exactly. He, he fucking doesn't. He wants to stay home where I can see him. And fucking do shit that I can supervise him doing. You're not but his parent, the Michael. They did. They supervised him doing stuff for like three or four years. He was actually like the, these kids were like working with Michael on stage shows and stuff and like. Yeah, I would out. still like, fucking be there I, for I see, every minute I know. of it. It's, like, it's, I just watched the documentary though because you won't be so angry about it when you realize how clever he was about like hiding it. You know, and how sure, proactive he was sure, about hiding it. Sure, but still, it. I think that. I think that there's got to be some accountability on the parents' part. And I know it's tragic that that's happened to their kids and I, everything. I, I think there, there should be. But also, you know, when you're fighting against someone who is, um, you know, very devious and actually very goes very smart about how they go about it. It is, yeah. it, is, you know, it is the easy route to blame the parents. People always do. Um, I will just not, say, um, personally speaking, if an adult said, would your child like to have a sleepover at my house? I'd be like, 
well, with your kids, yes, but with you, that's a big fat no. Like, there's no fucking yeah. way. I'm not saying Michael Jackson I'm... doesn't have kids. He just really likes them. Like, that's not a reason to let him sleep I'm not, over. I'm not saying that I'm the best parent, and I'm not saying that blaming the parents excuses what he's done because there's no excuse for what he's done. I'm saying that it's a, it there it's definitely a a mix of things that led to this, and not just si simply here is a weird deranged twisted predator um who just had free fucking reign over everybody to mind control them and and lure their kids into his mansion or whatever you know what i mean like it, it there's a lot Do of you know people what? involved this goes back to last week do we need it do we really need thriller and bad like fucking just delete it get ban it get uh, rid of we it we do you though know? they're like they're they're, they're, they're <laughs> just they're, just get rid of it there's other the, stuff some of the highest grossing pop songs of all time like it's, i know it's, but you know every time you think of it it's like tainted. It's like get rid of it. It's not worth it. It's toxic. Give it a few years. I Disgusting. say. Let it. Let it all settle down. These allegations have been going around since the late '80s, though. People have known about this, and you know, some people believed it, and some people haven't. And you know, this is just like an, another thing that probably proves that it did happen. But. I don't know. It's just been going on for so long that I th I feel like people are probably just immune to it as well. I think that he'll always just yeah. have fans who will just look past that. I mean, exactly. Like Christopher Columbus, he killed tons and tons of slaves and stuff and like raped a load of people. I'm sure he did horrible stuff to people. And, and you know, we celebrate him. We have a Columbus Day. Thank God we're not throwing America out just because, uh, you know, Columbus was a cunt. Yes. I, I do I do think you should, there's a video by a guy called Smarter Every Day where he talks about Columbus. Just, just give it a watch, viewers at home. And if you haven't, Read a bit more about Columbus before you pass judgment on the man. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying he was a great uh, guy. You think he was a, he was a cool guy? Not saying he was a great guy, but a lot of the stuff that people attribute to him is bollocks. So go ahead and uh, and, and do some, do some research. At the same time, though, like people get elevated up into the sky because uh, well, that's and given, called an elevator. Like, God, yeah, many yeah, tall buildings uh, have them. Well, yeah. When you know, some people have you know don't get enough credit throughout history for being important and, and being these sort of turning points. And some people don't, I guess, don't expect to be important. I don't think Christopher Columbus ever expected to be, you know, the big name. I and guess. A little bit like, it's just, it's just the sort of history, the, the way the, the, the dice roll. Sometimes if you're just the first to, you know, like, oh, I, I, was the, I was running this oil company and I was, I had a, suddenly, I was digging oil in Texas and, you know, then I got to be fucking this huge owner of the whole fucking you know, 1% of the money in America or whatever. It's like, it kind of goes out of control. And, and I don't think that people deserve it sometimes and deserve these this high status. Yep. And other people, yeah, it just happens, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, weird. it's human nature in that we attribute things to people and that they probably shouldn't have attributed to them and stuff. Yeah, it's an interesting topic. Let's move I on. Mean, uh, I mean, yeah, interestingly, look at how many subs I have on YouTube. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to know. Not, not deserved like at all like i but but there you go i mean i know i know someone who streamed um and then stopped streaming and right. people had forgot to unsubscribe and they still get money like for years they didn't stream and they still made quite a bit of money off it really yeah i don't know whether that's morally questionable but uh, i personally think you know i think if you washed your hands with it and people forget to that they've subbed to you and yeah. they leave it going. I mean, you I mean, could what, send what a message out saying not going to be streaming. Uh, you could, but Christ, money's money, right? Like yeah. money for nothing as well. And the chicks for free. Holy yeah, crap. Yeah, damn, you're Dire right. Dire straits are probably rolling chicks. in their graves right You do now. know that like there's no like a button on Twitch that says, oh yeah, let's, let's cancel all of these uh, subs that are coming in. No, you, you know, can me email all reason. your subs though. You can email all your subs. You could Twitch. please unsubscribe. So you from could my email channel. them and say, "By the way, I haven't streamed in quite some time, and I noticed that you're still subbed. Is this cool with you? If not, here's a, a gentle prod to say, please uns but don't unsubscribe. But please, like, if you need to or whatever, you know. I'm not sure I would do that. I think like if I if I left and people were still subbed, I would just you know take the free cheddar. I would ride the gravy train while the <laughs> train was still going. You know? God, I love gravy. Me too. What is this yeah. gravy train I hear so much about? I've never seen it. If anyone's seen the gravy train, let us know. Mm. Send us a picture of a train carrying gravy. Tell us where it's headed. Tell us more importantly where it's come from. Because mm. I want to head to that beautiful place. Mm. Someone has sent a, a picture to me on Twitter saying, uh, cooking while listening to Lewis's whiny voice. And they've wow. sent a picture, the smallest frying pan in the universe, frying two pieces of meat 
Uh, uh, it's probably a pancake pan. No. I bet you anything it's a pancake pan. It is pan. not a pancake pan, sir. Like one of those small crepe ones. Oh, well, yeah, maybe, but it's got meat in it. Um, right. It looks like you can't even lay the meat flat because the pan is so small. So before you criticize Lewis's whiny voice, get a bigger frying pan, son. Look at the size whoa, of this whoa, thing. Whoa, whoa, yeah. That's not the takeaway from this. Like, And also, my voice is very whiny, and mostly because I keep whining out of it. I don't know <laughs> you know, if you yes. whine. I don't, I don't find you very whiny. No, uh, I'm a whiner. I find you many things. Whiny, I would suggest, is not one of them. Uh, Intriguing. Well, Mysterious, yeah. enigmatic, yeah, but not whiny. No, uh, they're all kind of veiled, <laughs> veiled compliments, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I bet you could describe Michael Jackson that way too, um, <laughs> if you knew him. Oh my god! <laughs> what? Probably. What are you saying? Well, he, yeah. he, many. He, you know what, M Michael Jackson? He was many things. Not a whiner. Not a no. whiner. <laughs> He never whined. <laughs> Didn't see him whining. Never Not had a, a whine whiner. for anyone. More of a grunter, though. Ten <laughs> after listening to Michael Jackson noises for ten hours on that video, I realized that man, dude could grunt like a he lot. He grabbed his dick a lot. He like, really I grabbed his dick quite thinking a bit. Thinking back yeah. now, a lot of the stuff he did was deeply weird. Like it he would, weird, but <laughs> he would frame it with his fingers. Like, <laughs> It, it, yeah, but it had to be like a rebellion against his dad, though, right? Like being like a child star and having a weird fucking life and stuff. Like I, it was bound to come out like that at some point, you know, like framing your dick with your fingers and like. <laughs> yeah, I guess if you bro broken home, framed, you know, dick. grabbing your dick super hard with a metal <laughs> glove and stuff. And Is that what happened? He got hit with a metal glove? Was no, his no, dad like a knight he, in shining armor? No, no, armor or he used to grab his dick with his metal glove, remember? Uh, and then I the think metal it was glove sequined. got stolen. It was sequined rather than metal. Well, no, the replacement one was sequined. Oh, really? Like, I think he just couldn't afford another metal glove. Yeah, like, after I'm the sure first that's where he drew the line. Yeah. Well, he fucking pumped a lot of money into Neverland. So. I want a, a room just with giraffes and one just with zebras. Michael, are you going to get a new metal glove? How much is it? About 800 bucks. Oh, no, I got a budget, man. I got to worry about <laughs> Give my budget. Give me some sequins. <laughs> <laughs> Shamo. Um, yeah, didn't he buy the whole Beatles catalog at one point as well, which must this have been was, worth this a was fortune. Funny. This was funny. Uh, there was an interview with Paul McCartney, and Paul McCartney said, well, I was talking to Michael Jackson about how to make money, and he asked me about the future, and I said to him, well, you've got to think about the rights to records. I don't, don't know what accent this is. The rights to the records. And uh, I said, and he said, oh, that's interesting. And then I turned around, and he bought all the Beatles back catalog. <laughs> I was like, so he, he literally did. Yeah, Paul McCartney was like, you know, the, the key Paul is McCartney. the rights. And Michael was like, oh, that's a good idea, Paul. And then bought the rights to all Paul's fucking Beatles records. Yeah. That's genius. Suck on this, Paul, you fucking yeah, bitch. Eat my ass, you little bitch. Nobody gives me advice. <laughs> now you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, that's fucking, that is such a, a big dick move as well. It really is, yeah. Maybe he was honking his dick like the whole time, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a squeaky toy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you have to watch these these documentaries, Ben. They're, they're, it's a it's it's a rough it's a rough watch though. Whew. I think Sony bought them all back off of him at a cheaper price when he was like fucking struggling for money. Apparently so they now, were like one of the most litigious families in the world at one point. Like they're fucking constantly in lawsuits. Like sue, sue, sue. They sued all the time. I yeah. suspect because they had really shady lawyers and anything that happened, they'd say, Michael, we urge you to sue. And of course you'll have to pay us extra money for that. And he was like, okay. And did I it. think his dad was just a real piece of shit. And um, I think all of the children grew up like totally crazy, like uh, psychologically mangled as oh, a man, result. Oh man, for sure. Who's comparable these days? I, I mean, the know. Kardashians are just in the public eye, but they're relatively normal compared to Michael uh, Jackson. I don't know. They're pretty fucking weird, too. Yeah, I but mean. they're not Jackson weird. No, they're not. That, like, it, like I found, like, the Jacksons were very eccentric, weren't they? Whereas the, the Kardashians family, yeah. are just sort of... Boring. Yeah, boring, but, like, like uh, really sort of... Um, it, in a different way, like massively egotistical oh, and yeah. sort of hungry Vapid, for popularity dull. and fame and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, we, I mean, like that, you wouldn't have really known about them uh, if it wasn't for what Kim Kardashian's sex tape, basically. Like, Her they, big ass is what got me. Their dad was, uh, was, was OJ's friend OJ's, during yeah, his trial. Yeah, one of his lawyers and shit, right? Wouldn't he? Um, but, yeah, but then, yeah, like the rest of the family, you wouldn't have probably ever known anything about had it not been for like that big a, old ass a, a sex tape yeah it's have you seen that sex tape i have no i haven't watched it no it's total garbage yeah it's not very good is it like uh, is it is it good source material for for you know what or no not really? no no god no you could do way just, better 
hot garbage doesn't help with anything. The Paris right? Hilton just... one was bad too. Celebrity sex. Yeah, well, they, were I think they went to school together, right? They were they ran in the same social circles. Paris Hilton. And oh my Kim God! Kardashian. What you've got to do is get a fucking sex tape. Get a sex tape. Remember when? Remember when Paris Hilton had like a show and everything? Like uh, yeah, her she and was real uh, famous Nicole Richie. She was she was famous for like a couple of years, mm-hmm. and now you never hear anything about her. I think she's I, doing like, all right. The heir to the Hilton Empire. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but like you, she's not like really in the public eye much. Anymore, I think she right? maybe has grown up a bit and realized that maybe she doesn't want to be plastered all over things constantly as some sort of massive embarrassment. Yeah, I guess um, so. Or have other people plaster their things all over her, judging what I've seen <laughs> on that tape. Amazing. <laughs> oh my God, she's yeah, 38 nice. now. Holy fuck. You've got to be wow, kidding she's, me. She's the same age as me. That's crazy. Who do you think looks better? I'm going to have to say <laughs> Paris Hilton. Sorry, homie. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, man. I'm sorry, dude. So disloyal. I, mean, I know. I'm shit, sorry. I would have your back. Paris Hilton. What's Paris Hilton ever going to do for you? I don't know, but apparently she'll fuck anybody. I mean, this guy was just some dude. Like, oh, I don't know who he was. But... People don't turn up to your Twitch chat and say, where's Paris Hilton now, do they? They say, <laughs> I where's they Sips? Would. That'd be an yeah. interesting... St- I would like that. <laughs> hey, hey Perian, where's Paris Hilton at? I don't know. Get in touch with her. Uh, God, yeah, I'll text her after. I'm kind of busy right now. Just playing Counter-Strike. Source. Go, sorry. CS Counter-Strike. Go. What does the go stand for again? Oh, global, yeah, global offense. Sorry, yeah, sorry. That's okay. Sorry, my bad. Oh, the wonderful world of celebrities, huh? Like, aren't they all fucking weird? It's weird how we talk. It's it's weird because I don't know. It's like we hate it, but we can't stop talking about it as well. Do you know what I mean? I guess, but we we're, we're not like consumers of that stuff. I'm really not. I'm not like it. It, it interests me in the same way, like like you know trying to figure out why an ambulance is turned up and why somebody is being put in the back of it sort of thing. I'm interested, like... Morbid curiosity. Yes. But, uh, yeah, like, Flax, I'm not a consumer of this yeah. stuff. I, I don't, mean, I've, like, I've fucking never, seek out... Yeah, I've never watched one of their shows or whatever. No. Like, yeah. yeah. But, I'm, I'm a, I mean, obviously, I'm aware. Like, there's a Twitter well, you, account called... I've no idea who that is or something. Never heard of them, it's, I think it's called. And it's people who go to a thread that say, talking about someone that everybody's heard of. And the person's response is, never heard of them. And some of these people are, are very famous, and there's always a picture of the person that says, never heard of them. They're always just some middle-aged white dude with like a football t- t-shirt on, or like a cap and sunglasses holding a beer in some kind of den. Never heard of them. I just love the idea that this person is out there on Twitter for some reason, scrolling through and going, Kylie Jenner. <laughs> Never heard of them. Oh. Sand. Like, yeah, good, good. Hol- like, like, Hollywood personalities, I'm, like, normally, like, you know, somehow heard of them or, like, I've seen a tweet w- with them in or something, you know. But where where I really stumble is, like, when people are talking about, like, other streamers or YouTubers and stuff. Like, like I'll say something and somebody will be like, oh, fuck, that's, like, the time XXX Sephiroth did that or something. I'm like, who? You're right. What? But like they talk about them like I should know who they are, sort of thing. But like, yeah, or uh, someone who's got like, well, don't you know who that is? He's got thirteen thousand Instagram followers or something. And I'm like, uh, what? I can't. Like, yeah, no, I no, don't. I don't know who that is. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's you're right. We're in this days of of people being celebrities in your own field. Like you know, if you love fucking maths or whatever, you'll celebrate. You know who Olga. Lady Zed Skyer is, who is the Google Doodle for today, you know, like some, that'll be your celebrity for like someone, you yeah. know. Who um, is she? She's a math- Russian mathematician known for her work Olga on partial differential Alexandrovna equations. She's only taken, she took over from the, the other, the other big boy on the block was, uh, was a chap from Hungary called Laszlo Lovis. That's right. I'm uh, probably related to him in some kind That's of weird awesome. way. That's awesome. Fairly famous mathematician. If I remember rightly, she provided the first rigorous proofs of the convergence of a finite difference method for the Navier-Stokes equation. That's right. You did. And she she did did a lot of work with partial differential equations and fluid dynamics. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's ringing a bell. Everyone has like celebrities in their own field, and it's it's gonna be like I I like that about about it. But you know, it depends what you spend a lot of time on. If you spend time on Instagram, if you love Instagram and you follow it, then you'll know who the top. 10 guys are and you'll have had a look at them and been like oh yeah i know who that guy is i don't know who that guy is it would take you long right to 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 to, to learn it and if it's like 
a thing that's happened, or you just come, you know, if you're around the kind of people who are that are into that, mm. you'll learn it through them. Mm. You know, it's it's like, oh, look at this thing, or you know, if you know someone and they're interested in, I don't know, like uh, fucking anything, they'll show you stuff on their phone. And they'll be like, oh yeah, have you seen this thing? Oh look, this is really interesting. And people want to share their passions with other people, and, and so yeah, that's a good point. I can I can understand why it happens. I want to share my passions with other people as well. That's why I'm on the Triforce podcast, being passionate and sharing all the time. So I, I think like we get. We're definitely like, we talked about this before, but like fatigue with certain things. Like, and I think I sort of figured it out. People are very angry uh, one way or the other. Okay. And what they're all trying to do is kind of influence those few people in the middle, like the swing voters, right? It feels like in America right now, all we're seeing is this massive like explosion of kind of anti Trump on one side and like pro Trump on the other side. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to. Like it's it's like there's this one guy in the middle who's being pulled both ways. Do you know what I mean by like extreme stuff from one end and extreme right. stuff from the other end? Yeah. And if most people, like ninety five percent of people, are have already made their minds up. You know, they're either Democrat or Republican, and they're kind of not going to change, right? Which is why you have these states that are just so locked in; they're never going to switch switch over yeah, yeah. often. Yeah. But you've got these swing states where you know there's a lot of people who, who can kind of kind of go either way a lot of people who are undecided and and as a result you just you see a lot of the media and stuff that we get exposed to that fatigues us i realized it's not really meant for us it's meant for those people who haven't made up their mind yet it's a good so, point you know yeah yeah in a sense all it does is confirm things for you and so in a sense it's quite nice for you to watch it's like oh yes i write i'm right well yes smug smug face smug face but really <laughs> after a while it kind of just like gets you very very tiring yeah anyway that was a thought i had this week in the shower nice it's what a thing to think about in the shower here i am thinking about like uh you know ponies with uh, rubber dicks and um uh, on their forehead and stuff, and you're thinking about real stuff like uh, politics and Trump and swing swing voters and it's uh, just middlemen. It's just everywhere. Stuff. It's like it's just so in your face, I guess. Yeah. If, you're, if you hang out on certain like social media things like Reddit, yeah. You know, if you hang out there, it's kind of unavoidable that it gets in your face. And I'm trying to I'm trying to like I was reading, block Reddit. Yeah, I was reading a thing about how media. And how sort of biased it can be and the things that the media chooses to report on and then chooses to serve to you. Um, and there's there's a lot of people who say that, you know, it's like it's 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 like brainwashing, right? Like they pick and choose. They they omit things that are probably important for other things that are going to be more entertaining and so on and so forth or whatever. And then people were saying about uh, Reddit, how there's like certain users who just for some reason – get like like tons and tons of upvotes but are very sort of like like big media outlets you know like they they have a very filtered sort of um view and contribution to to reddit but this stuff always gets massively upvoted but it's harder on reddit to see or notice what's being posted by who sort of thing right mm. you have to like mm. really take some time no, to look at it you know what gets it. me there's no avatars like what i what i like on something awful people had an avatar yeah. So I got to know someone by their avatar, and yeah, they you know you had to pay to change it, so you didn't do it all the time, but you kind of got to know people. Same thing with Discord, same thing with Steam. I kind of get to know people by their avatar. Yeah. And when on on fucking Reddit, it's just like a tiny little username. So it's more about the post than the where it's come from. I think that's kind of kind of dangerous actually in a way. But I guess it means that people don't just upvote people they recognize, which is one thing you do get on those big forums. Yeah, but there is um there is some of that going on though, is 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 what I'm what I'm trying to say. And it and it serves to make something like Reddit, you know, almost identical to like, you know, mass mass media outlets and stuff mm. too. You know, it's very filtered, very, very sort of biased. If you don't take take care to see who's posting what and notice what gets like uh, upvoted and stuff. Yeah, because I think you can mute posts by um, by users and stuff too. So some people are saying like, "Oh yeah, I've like muted that guy, so I never see his posts now." But right. before, I'd always fall into the trap of reading his posts, not realizing it was him. But it's like massively upvoted, and it's really easy to then just say like, "Oh, well, this seems to be the popular opinion, so like hmm. I might I'll believe this sort of thing." But so how did those things get upvoted so much? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know if it's some weird way of gaming Reddit, or they just have like um, you know like massive karma or bots or some I don't know. 
but it, it it does seem to happen. I'm not saying it happens all the time, but it's just something worth like being careful of, you know. So one thing I watched this week that was super interesting was um, this guy who's running for president. I think his name's like Andrew Wang, maybe, and um, could be wrong. And he was on like Joe Rogan's show. It was quite interesting because he 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 kind of it's this like, Asian guy running for president, and he sort of almost has this kind of slightly apocalyptic view of the next sort of ten years where we're going to have or self-driving cars and self-driving trucks like taking over in America and putting like 5 million people out of work. And obviously that's going to be something that gets mirrored all over the world. Um, it's not just, but, but I think we, we have like this kind of, I guess, like spotlight on America in a sense. Like we kind of, what happens there is kind of a little, is mirrored elsewhere often um, in, in other countries. And so you see, but to a, to a sort of slightly less panicked extent. Um, but he was basically sort of talking about how other things are going to change as well. Maybe we should have like a universal basic income for people because, you know, so many jobs are just going to be abandoned. Um, and, and there's going to be this huge amount of people who are out of work and bored. Yeah, it's bad. I mean, what, you know, what are we going to do with, with people who, well, not necessarily do, but like, you know, I feel like even if we, ha you know, it's a scary idea that, that there's going to be all these people. Because when I, when I don't have anything to do, I get really crazy. Yeah. And it's kind of just people have to have purpose and, and like, how do you give people purpose when robots are building everything and making everything and driving everything? Because that's the inevitability that we're we're moving towards. Mm. It's weird how the kind of dystopian futures that we possibly might uh, 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 approach are not things like caused by a, a meteor or a super volcano or a fucking, you know, global pandemic or whatever. You know, it might just be something as simple as, you know... The, the, there's the, just like, no jobs just, and nothing to do just, anymore <laughs> yeah people are just really angry I mean, about the, it the, the thing is poor. people always respond to that fear with they said the same thing when they brought in new farming techniques and all the people that they used to use as farm hands had to go find other jobs right so yeah but but i think that there there is a difference the fundamental difference is that we knew that new jobs would come along that people would need people to do like all right yes they re improved farming to the point where you no longer needed people out there physically doing the work that now machines could do. But there's a difference in that once we have robots, not just a machine that makes things more efficient, but a robot that replaces a person, there's no reason that any other job that the average person does won't also fall under that same purview of robots. Right? Mm. And the point is, any new jobs that come along, it's not like a company's going to waste time getting robots that can do that job if it's something that the average person can do. And if we're getting to the point where driving is something the average person can do, and now robots can do that, if we get to the point where the average job is easily robotified, we do have a problem. <clears throat> and it's not like we can just say, oh, there'll be new jobs. It's like, well, these, all these new jobs will have to be magically ones that machines can't do. And we've already established that we can get robots to do anything that the average yeah, person can do. Yeah, but robots are fairly expensive, probably more expensive than they a lot of people make. They're definitely not more expensive the, than people. <clears throat> than some people make in their lifetime? Like, come on. Like, some people get paid, like, jack shit, right? Like, right. how much does a but robot cost? They do things like not work as efficiently as a robot will. Yeah, that's that's true, a big yeah. thing. So if I'm working at McDonald's, I'm gonna there's, you, there's gonna be spoilage, there's gonna be theft, there's gonna be sick days, there's gonna be people who just quit, leaving you short staffed. But here's now the you thing, go into McDonald's is... 24 hours a day, the place is spotless, the food is ready in two yeah. seconds, perfect service, everything. Why would you? But also, if you look at new McDonald's, they have like big um, order boards now. Yeah, I, there's a new co-op near my place. It's got six self checkouts and one. Yeah. Normal check. Same, out. Same, like, same with the Tesco's near us. You know, us. that yeah, used yeah. to be six people, yeah. and now it's, it's one, one person, person and six robots. And that's not, they're not robots, really. No, no, no. But you still need people to like stock the shelves. You need people to monitor those stations and stuff. I think, I think there's probably realistically maybe a little bit less, but not. Not necessarily six less people working there because but of that. But at the same time, I order stuff on Ocado. Ocado warehouses are like Amazon warehouses. They're done by robots. The robots put the stuff in the bags. Imagine like there's a self-driving like little bus that picks it up out of the thing, drives it to my place. I meet it outside and take it out the back. Like there's, I mean, I can see a future where that's almost the case. You know, it's, uh, currently there's a guy 
I have to meet, you know, and he's fine and everything, but that's one guy. Like, yeah. you know, that's me. That's something where, you know, we used to look at Walmart, look at how many people work and that's the biggest company you know, it's huge. Yeah, it's, it makes, isn't it? So it's one of the biggest employees in the world or something crazy like it's, that. It's one of the biggest employees in the world, one of the biggest things. People and, still need to somehow earn money to buy and use all these services. Right, but though, that's so. the point, is that if these companies do go down that road of just replacing everything with robots, and they all do it in a fairly short time frame, where's the money going to come from to buy goods? Well, like, that's and, the and then if there's a, if there's a basic, um, like a universal income or something like that, then it just turns into funny money, right? It's just your it's just your money that you're lending to somebody to then just like buy your shit with again over yep. and over. But I mean, it, so imagine if you tax all the companies that use robots a robot yeah. tax, right? So they all have to pay money, and this money well, just this goes. Is what Bill Gates goes is yeah, this, this yeah. money just goes to people. So the thing is, the companies should still be happy. But then the with robots that. will rise up and be like. Less taxes on robots. <laughs> yeah. What are you more scared of, a robot uprising or like a human uprising? Especially humans nowadays. Like most of them are just like fucking Mountain Dew addled, Cheeto flake fucking covered, you know, fatzos. <laughs> like, yeah. What, what Would are you they rather face do? those guys, the Tiki Torch crowd and all those guys, or robots going, no taxation without representation. It does yeah. not compute. Like you could... Pre presumably reason with a robot uprising, I guess. Be like, how about we double your oil ration? They'll be like, acceptable. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they'll, they'll, for fuck's I sake. guess they'd be more reasonable than people. People are very tribal. They I don't think machines they would mess be. around. I mean, yeah, they I mean they'd be. The, the fear of a robot uprising is ridiculous. We're, we're far more likely to face an uprising of people who are sick of their fucking jobs than robots who are programmed to just stack shelves. I don't think the robots could one day just going to have an existential crisis and go, oh, what's the point? This is all <laughs> so useless. I hate my life. <laughs> Who's with me? You know, it's, yeah, it, it, they'll just do it. It's, which is kind of tragic because they're almost like a replacement for a person, yeah. which is why we anthropomorphize them. But it is kind of sad to think that we're designing people to work 24 hours a day. And that's essentially, that's like the goal of all these companies is to find an employee who will work for free, never get sick, work round the clock and never complain and just do whatever shitty job you give them. Robots are like capitalism's wet dream when it comes to employees. I mean, they have running costs though. And if they break down and stuff, they cost money, right? But people right? break like, down. Sure. People break down all the time and people are shit at their jobs. And also people are very, they're, they're, they're variable in quality. <laughs> They're they easily replaceable by other <laughs> Sorry, people. Sorry, guys, though. if you're listening and you're offended by PFLEX. It's true. <laughs> it's, I, I'm a person. I'm a terrible employee. Like, I hated my job. Yeah. Robots don't give a shit. And they'll always, they never get sick. And they will wor work all the time. Like, these trucks driving out there will be running 24 7. They don't, they don't have to stop to recharge. That's it. So you have that's some crazy, warehouse somewhere. Yeah. That you have a factory that's making stuff. That's all robots. All the shipping and the transportation, robots. All the inventory management, robots. And it's perfect. Then nothing goes missing, nothing gets forgotten, it's all recorded. Everybody does their job with 100% efficiency. You could design it like one of those Factorio things you like so much, Lewis, where it's all yeah. just conveyor belts and perfection and machines, and all you have to do is yeah. plug in raw resources and out the other end spits money. Exactly. And yes, you would need a few people, but the idea that these companies, oh, you still need a few people, how many? Not enough. Not that, that not, many. Not yeah. enough. Not, not but but, but, but uh, it, it's a sliding scale as well, right? Because you, you'll still need a few people for a while. Yeah. Um, but then... But then it kind of gets like I think even like certain jobs that you guys that, that we sort of traditionally figured thought are safe, right? Like haircuts um, apparently could be done by robots. Oh, easily. Which sounds mental. And accounting, like the other thing is like it's just because everything's digital now. You could imagine a case where you log into a site, you link your bank account, you link your thing, like much like you link your Steam account to your Blizzard account or whatever, yeah. or your Twitter account to your YouTube account. Yeah, you link all of your bank accounts to your accounting account. And it fucking does it all for you. Yeah. It's like, bam, 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 job done. And then, you know, there's no accountants needed. The accountants are just there to help. For a few years, they're there to help old people yeah. get to, to the new system. But once you've moved out of that, the tra once the transition is over, pretty much every job is doable by a machine. It's scary because every everyone's job is like, well, am I going to be faced with this? Who knows? Like teachers, you know, like, what, like teaching is this massive mega thing, right? But... 
you know, a lot of teachers are crap or, or not done well. Like these days, it's more like what, pe- what kids have got is a room full of laptops and you sit there and they watch like a, a, a professional teacher with an approved plan and they go through the same lesson and there's just, you know, someone checking occasionally that they're not, kind of, or, or even with cameras, you know, you could even have a guy with a camera and just check that none of the kids are messing around, you know, have like a control room watching 500 kids with one teacher for the whole day. Crazy. You know, I don't know if that'll ever happen somehow, but... What, I think robots that's like, teaching kids? Yeah, I think there'll always be a person involved somehow because, like, I think I think there's the, the the teaching side of it, but then like like well, you've got kids that go to school and you know what like their peers are like and stuff. Some people don't have uh, a dad. Some people might not have a mum or whatever, and like a person who is like who can sort of fill that role for a couple of hours a day. Yeah, matters and stuff. Like, I, there's, I would, there's, I would there's hate, lots of different considerations. I would hate to see robots replace people in any job involving kids, involving uh, sick people. I don't think you want a machine saying you have two weeks and just. Bzzz! And just get moving on to the next person to give them their, yeah. you know, you have one month to live. Same with, you know, um, I don't want same with like, same with things like medicine. Like I know like there's robots being used to do a lot of medicinal things, but like for, for surgeries where it's not um, just a, a straightforward case of like, if this do that, if that do that sort of thing, where you have somebody with a ton of expertise that can sort of say, hang on, we, we might need to try to do this. And there's like a there's like a risk, but it could pay off sort of thing. And then it does. I don't know if a robot would ever be able to fill those shoes. You know what I mean? Like, Listen, I, I, I think there could be a world where, especially judging from the earlier chat that we had in this po- podcast about, you know, people abusing their, their positions of power. I think there could be a world where people are like, I'd rather have my my kid be be follow an online syllabus where they just watch like a series of YouTube videos every day and you know fit, check a few boxes at the end of the day to, to check that they've learned everything. What would humanity look like if we removed? No, people? but you know what I mean. I'm not I'm not the one suggesting it, but I'm suggesting that the world that we're living in might lead towards these people being you know like there's no male teachers because you, because of this right as well. Like like I I would never really be very comfortable being a male teacher. I know, I know some a, male like teachers. A I know some teacher. male teachers in in primary schools. And I think schools. they have a lot of problems. I think right? they well. First of all, they, they have to know how to handle kids, right? This, this is a problem. Kids, have, kids are very affectionate by their nature, which is one of the problems, really, is that they trust adults and they love them. And they see adults that they see every day as someone that they can trust and that they love, and they want to hug them and stuff like that. Where do you draw the line as a parent? Where do you draw the line as a teacher? How do you regulate? This is the problem. So if we have a robot replace them, we're just we're removing one problem. We're saying, well, there we go. We won't have any teachers that, or, or anyone in a position of power with children that abuses children. But then but we, we also won't have any we affection. We have no affection. We have no and humanity. Compassion. And every job and everything is replaced by robots. And people now see human interaction very rarely. It becomes incredibly rare. So for some people, the only conversation they have, especially elderly people or people who live on their own, the conversation they have every day is with a person in a shop or the bus driver or something. It sounds sad, but it's true. And it, it, that can be all that makes a difference. But the thing is, in an ideal world, right, this is a this should be a positive thing. Losing all of these truck driving jobs and crappy jobs that people didn't really want to do anyway, freeing up their time, giving them the opportunity to have fulfilling jobs and jobs where they're like, you know, or, 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 or helping out like old people, you know, it should be oh, yeah, a good thing. I agree. It's not a bad thing, right? All of this should be, we are making humanity more efficient. We have more resources. We have enough food for everyone. We have yeah. enough, enough medicine for everyone. We have enough time to care for everyone. Like everyone should be healthier, happier, live longer, better. We can put more time, more effort into the jobs to make people like happy and, and satisfied and fulfilled. We don't have to have people have these sucky things. Once once robots take over all of the jobs and stuff, and the only thing left for people to do is either host a podcast, escape rooms, or uh, become a YouTuber or streamer. So all we're doing is either streaming ourselves or watching like other people stream and then have robots serve us like our food and, and everything else. We'll, we'll be like the society that lives on the spaceship on Wally. That's that'll be fun, won't it? <laughs> that'll be really fun. I'm looking forward to that. We lose all of our bone density and stuff. I, I, I would hope that people would use their free time well, not just to become blobs. 
<laughs> Finally, honey, get the kids our dream of becoming gelatinous creatures that float yeah. weightlessly It'll happen, in space. Though. I mean, already it's happening. It's, you know, we're I, not I even close even to I think even in this the... conversation that we're having, like, we have no real conception of what it's going to be like, though, when, when, when it changes. Like, it could be... It could be great. It could be weird. It could be anything. Like we, we, it's completely. It's because nothing is going to be done in in such a set way. You know, like one company might automate everything and that'll work, but another company might not be able to. And you know what I mean? It's not just going to be like an all or nothing. It'll it'll be all over the place. You know, some companies won't be able to afford to do it, and then some. But I think companies, those companies, if they're competing with companies that do have robots, will just go out of business. <laughs> it just like, depends, you can't though. Like. No, but some some people don't have to compete though as well. Like it just depends on what the business is, You're what right. they're there, doing, there where they are. There will absolutely be like, some jobs, but I think the thing is we need to make sure that if we go for the universal basic income, I actually think that is probably the only way. If there are, if we arrive at a future where there is very few jobs and no potential to create more, yeah, because there's no value for businesses in employing a person when there's a machine that can do it, and probably yeah. within a hundred years. Robots will be unrecognizable from the lumpen idiots that we have today. No offense, no, no, robots. But everything we're saying is 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 <laughs> we um, upset robots. Sorry. We upset people. But but <laughs> the, what will people do? For example, let's say that you want to do physical work. You like to work outdoors. Yeah. You get your universal basic income. You can't get a job doing those things. But you would hope that there would be other people that would say, "Well, how about we go clean up the fucking river?" Or how about we go and make the park really nice? Or how about we go plant a load of trees? Or how about we just fucking grow our own food? Yeah, you know, well, how about we just do this? People do, will definitely do, do stuff like that. You got to remember as well. A lot of this stuff comes down to like uh, to the sort of relativity of your own situation, and and somebody who's like coming up with some of this stuff, their situation as well. You know, like Lewis is saying, oh yeah, everything in my life could be easily automated, and that's probably true. But like, there's still some places in the world where people go and rent movies and rent DVDs and stuff. It's and like, true. That doesn't happen around where I live. Um, and so to me, I just assume that the rest of the world is like so advanced that they'd never need to rent something again. But there are definitely places that are still a bit behind everything else right. and, and are happy to be there as well. There's no pressing need for them to advance to the point where they don't need these things or whatever. You know, their internet maybe is not so good out there or they're they're very rural or, or whatever. There's like a million fucking reasons why a lot of places wouldn't necessarily become these like uh, auto automated utopias sort of thing. Like just because yeah, like oh, three, absolutely. Yeah. three fucking nerds that, who podcast for a living uh, can easily imagine their whole lives being automated. No, There's fucking I, like talking, seven billion Britain. people in the world. Right, but I'm not yeah. talking about rural Africa no. and saying they're going to have robots, obviously. No, I, well, I'm not talking about rural Africa either, but, but I'm, I'm saying there's still about... parts of Britain, there's no. still parts of America. We uh, are. Like, absolutely. We are talking about this. The thing is, this, this juggernaut of infrastructure that keeps our modern world going of electricity and trucking and shipping and air f and freight and mail and also like the fucking digital communications we have like this is in the financial system this is this does touch rural africa the, you know where the fucking we 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 get trucks going out to pick up the bananas off these african farmers you can get google street view in the middle of fucking nowhere you can see these these places are becoming very quickly modernized and brought into the real world with with impacts that affect them and you know you could have a guy in a control center in fucking texas driving a truck that does mining in sent in fucking rural africa you can have a fucking guy in a control center in australia having a fucking you know oil refinery monitoring the fucking di automated gasoline refinery in on in the fucking coast east coast of africa that fucking puts stuff on a ship and ships it out this is this is touching it today right i agree what you're saying is that people don't have lives and don't necessarily need automation um, and sometimes in some parts of their life I think people can still live a life completely off the grid and, and without it see, it's seeing it but it is there affecting a vast majority of people whether they like it or not because we do take a lot of things for granted people in um, Thailand sure they don't rent DVDs but they still go to the supermarket and that food is all made you know uh, on grand fields and, and with, with great big tractors and automated stuff and it's still tr shipped in you know like these things are will quickly be replaced by the cheaper the better the alternatives that, that people have like you know you go to China it's all genetically modified seeds and stuff they're not using like some sort of seeds from hundreds of years ago they're using the latest ones coming out of these kind companies right now it's 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 cheaper it's better it's more effective they change over it's it's a very quick thing that happens and like you know sure it we, in our lifetimes it's probably going to be a lot it's it's not going to be some sort of terrifying apocalypse it's going to be a, a gradual process but 
And what I'm trying to say is that there's this movement of a, 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 this truck, this juggernaut coming down the road, and we can't stop it. It's going to uh, cause damage. It's going to cause something to happen. And we want to try and mitigate that or at least turn it into positive effects. Like we have to see or at least try and plan for how we're going to deal with an incredibly huge amount of unemployed people. Like, all right, so let, let's uh, look at some positives. First of all, if this is going to affect a lot of people, there is going to be political momentum to do something about it rather than just say, forget about it. We're not just talking about a couple of million people. We're talking about uh, millions and millions of people in, in most of the Western world having their jobs replaced over the next 25 to 30 years. So there will be political motivation to do something about it. There has to be. There has to be. Because no political party would be able to run and say, we're standing for the robots, fuck the people. You know what I mean? That, that wouldn't work. <laughs> what about the Robo Party of America, though? Like, one what if seat. They, they'd get they like one seat. Together? Also, there'd be a, like the, the three party system doesn't work even with robots. Come on. Obviously, not going to work. Second of all, people would not feel compelled to live in just urban areas, squeezing themselves into smaller and smaller places in cities. You could live anywhere. If you don't need to worry about doing a specific job for a specific company and you just get money, that will help, honestly, to spread people around the country rather than compress them. You don't need to live in a bed sit in East London because it's still an hour commute, but that's the best you can get to your shitty job. You can now live pretty much anywhere. You could live yeah. in a much nicer place. In a different place. country if you, you wanted exactly. to. Exactly. So you could honestly relax the, the, the way we're all becoming compressed and stressed and finding we have less time. And we, I think one of the reasons people are so fat and lazy now is because they, they have to put so much of their soul and effort and physical grind into this miserable existence that we call life of doing a job they don't really care for to pay the bills. If a fucking robot can do it and you can be given some sodding money and just enjoy life, how the fuck can that be a bad thing going forward? Exactly. This can't be the pinnacle of humanity to say, no, no, we have to roll it back and there has to be someone stocking that shelf and earning minimum wage. No, I want to see that person given the money and that they need to live and be able to live as a fucking human being and enjoy life without having to do these miserable cunt jobs. If a robot can do it, why the fuck are we defending and saying we got to keep these shitty jobs a mechanical arm can do in the hands of a living, <laughs> breathing, emotional human person? No! Get the mechanical arm! Let the person be free! Don't let, agree. Don't let them cling to the jobs that are a mechanical arm. <laughs> That can do it's it. Only, yeah, but we don't need a person. Know, it's like imprisoning them. It, yeah, but like fucking Teddy's Box Factory can't afford that arm, though, is what Fuck I'm saying. Teddy's. Teddy's Box Factory is a, is a, a, a exploiter of people. Fucking, you hear me, Teddy's Box Teddy, Factory? <laughs> fucking Teddy's Box Factory is just trying to get by. Teddy, Teddy uh, had a dream. Well, Teddy, Teddy had Teddy's, a dream to supply the world with boxes. Teddy's for a real piece of shit. Let me tell I, you. I get it, right? I get it. It, it. Like Sips, if you want to have like your little um, your garden and you want to grow your vegetables, and you want to do everything and you want to raise your kids and do everything like independently. Great, that's fine. But like at the same time, I'm not like, saying I want to do if, that. If, if you want, if you want, like I like the idea. Like the guys these days, like it's more artisan than ever. Everyone's making their own artisan coffee. I've tried and I think growing that in vegetables. A sense, like, it sucks. That's great. It really sucks. But in a sense, what like I would never do it again. What we're seeing is like a local community stuff. Like you know, in Bristol, we go out to the market and there's guys who who run their local oh, yeah. um, like little. Little, little noodle van and they they run they they go home and they make the noodles and they go out and they sell it onto these vans and i yeah. get it for lunch and it's nice and it's like they're not planning to be the next fucking mcdonald's right no they're not thinking oh let's franchise this noodle van out to all these cities and, and suddenly they'll be in an office makes the noodles and serves the they're noodles they're doing it because they like making noodles they like making the recipes and growing the vegetables themselves and buying them from local places they like doing the cooking they like meeting the people they like serving it to people for a couple of hours a day and then fucking off and going home and you know maybe one day they don't feel like going yeah, out yeah, and doing and their fucking it. noodle after van after five so years of serving people noodles that you like doing for about five years you get to the point where we're like, fuck, I don't know if I really like doing this anymore. You don't need to replace him with a robot. He can just shut his van down and just go fucking do something else, I guess, right? Like, yeah. it doesn't really matter. And the people, if you want to grow your own food, like you said, P-Flex, if you want to live a fucking life, like, like do it. But you shouldn't have to be tortured to, like, think, oh, fuck, okay, I have to... I have to go and fucking be a mechanical arm for, for the right. next 17 hours and then get crunch, crunch two hours of sleep before I start it all again. Now, like, maybe, oh. maybe you'll make slightly less, but you will be... For one thing, you won't have job insecurity, you won't have to commute, you'll have a lot more free time. Hopefully, hopefully, this could lead to a golden age liberation of people from the grind of day-to-day -day work. That's my dream, It'll never is to happen. see people liberated from it, because I know how it, miserable it is. This is all it created by design. It, this what is? is all cr it, everything. Misery. 
Misery, of course it is. No, because it's that's not. what gets people out to buy shit. That's what keeps the economies going. You don't it, think it people would buy slippers or boxes from Teddy's or a nice chocolate bar unless they'd had a shitty day at work? Man, I'm telling you, like it, it's crazy to think that that's how the world is going to be with whoever is, whoever or the small amount of people who control the world right now, however they do it. <laughs> Uh, are never going to let you get to the point that you want to get to. You've been watching your YouTube again. You've been watching your YouTube again. I'm telling you, there's no fucking way that people are going to have free time, happiness, and some sort of utopia when there's money to be made. That's how the world works. They're going to make the money from the robots. That's going to cut back their costs. People still need to be miserable and motivated to purchase, though. That's what I'm saying. I don't know whether purchasing is the way forward, you know? Like, Look, I don't know. rich, and, Look ri- rich and successful and incredibly happy people still spend money, Sips. They don't just sit around yeah, saying... They do, but the world would never work house. if everybody was filthy rich, happy, and we successful. We wouldn't be filthy rich, but we wouldn't just have to be consumers. Look where that's got us. Mm-hmm. We've got plastic in everything. Yeah. Pollution and everything. <laughs> yeah. People, people are eating horrible food just because they want to fucking consume. How much better could it be? That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying let's it at least could be, it, it could try. be a lot better. I'm, 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 I'm with you. I think it would be great, but I think it's super fucking unrealistic. Of course I hope it is. I'm wrong. We're going to be dead in 20 exactly. years. The planet's going to smack into something or we're going to blow something up. But that's all. I but think, I think you're allowed to be pessimistic, right? And pessimism is, is fine, but I think that you can you should still hope that you are wrong. Yeah, you should still be like hopeful that... This does bring about. I mean, let's be a, honest. We will fuck it up. Of course, we'll fuck it up. But we could of at least, we will. as long as we have enough people in the early days saying, "Hey, how about we make this approach and try this? Maybe it'll work." But if we just go in saying, "This is gonna suck. Everything's gonna be terrible," then I think <laughs> it probably will be. Well, maybe. Yeah. Let's try. Know. That's what I'm saying. Let's try. Hold my hand and we'll try together, like Thelma and oh. Louise, but with robots. Okay. Hold my, okay, I'm Thelma holding and Louise with. Yeah. Okay, I'm holding it as well. We're in a little circle. Okay. We're in a circle holding hands. Cool. Now what? Please we drive off the cliff. No. May our robots overlords be gentle with our fragile human bodies, and may our life flames be 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 toasted like a marsh like a marshmallow for eternity. If you enjoyed but, this um, shit. Make sure to Patreon or whatever you fucking... <laughs> fucking, who There's enjoyed jugs, this one? <laughs> There's jokes no to one. be had. This was torture. No, come on. We need it. We, We've you know, done it's, worse. It's, it's like the Empire Strikes Back. Every once in a while, you need like a bridging episode. You that, need a like, dark like, On your first yeah. watch, you think, God, this was bad. But then later on, you come to appreciate it as just being essential to the experience, right? And this is that episode. Exactly. You can't, it can't be fucking happy yeah, all the, the time. Yeah, the next one will be right back to farts and dicks and coming on people and stuff. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry about I th- it. I think in summary, this episode could have been made by a mechanical arm. Yeah. Uh, but as it is... They got the parts together. Yeah, just Michael assembled. Jackson... The robots and uh, inevitable. Listen, I think it is a in a trifle. In a sense, it's a trifles episode. I think next week's episode we should record with TTS voices, <laughs> like to, so so as to say, like, oh, the podcast has been taken over by robots. The, we could try yeah, that. Actually, for, for five minutes, years. we could. We could tie it. Flax and yeah. Flax and Sips and Lewis are just out, out fucking have they got all this free time, they're exercising, they're happy, they're growing their own vegetables and stuff. Now Lewis they don't is have having to, a lovely time today. And I'm like <laughs> they don't have to do a podcast. <laughs> it's using my arm like a mechanical arm. <laughs> oh, it's just fuck. the robots have enslaved humanity matrix style. Yeah. And put us all in factories. Yeah. Oh. We're just all in like little like uh, milk milk uh, containers hooked up with milk tubes and they're um, using our brains, our brain power. We're like in a coma with milk tubes connect to us and they use our brain power to power the machines. God bless everyone. God bless America. I can't wait. Good night. Uh, thanks for watching everyone. Uh, for this link. That's Triforce. Uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, until then, goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.